So we did all the sections, we converted them into blocks, and now we have to take care of the header and the footer. And although we could make them a part of the index template, I prefer to keep them as blocks because we can use the same way to customize them. So let's select the header element and add block with the ID header. The title will be header and the category will be again page sections. Okay, and here we have a title of the page. So instead of using block attributes, we can add site name WordPress action. And this will display the, the site name as, is it, as it is set in, in the WordPress dash, dashboard. So what will happen when we export this block? It will not be exported as a regular JavaScript block but as a dynamic PHP block because it is using PHP code. Let's see it. It is using the PHP code to display the site name. And then we have the, the menu. So we will select the the list that contains the, the menu items. And again, we will not do block attributes here, but we will add the menu action. And it will be the primary location. We don't need to register it because it's done by default in, in Pine Grove projects. So this will be replaced by the menu. And then the button, let's select the button. And here we will use block attributes. So we will have button link. And another attribute for the label. Yeah, let's export the team and reload the page in WordPress block editor. And now here we can add the header to the top of the page. And the menu is not defined yet, so that's why we, we get kind of um, a bit strange layout. So let's change the button label. And you can see when we change it, the change is not instant. It, it takes like half a second for the block to update. And the reason is that this is dynamic block. It is rendered on the server. So with every change we do, WordPress makes a call to the backend where the PHP code is rendering the block and then sending it back to the browser where it is displayed. So that's the reason why, if possible, we want to avoid using dynamic blocks. They're not so nice to edit. But at the same time, we can include a lot of dynamic functions, you know, like the site name here or the, the menu. And these are also very powerful. So it's kind of compromise we have to do. Okay, let's update the site and reload it here. And let's use the customizer to add the menu. So here in the menus, we have to create a new menu. Let's call it main navigation and it will be shown in the primary menu location. And let's add a couple of items like home and the post. Okay, these two we have. Publish, close. And now we see the menu is here. So 
we could add more pages to our website and they and then add them to the menu and they would appear up here and then of course for every page that we add we also have to add it its content like build the blocks uh, use our blocks to create the not just the content of that page but the, the whole layout of the, that page so okay now we have we have the header in place and what we want because each page in our website if we have multiple pages will share the same header so instead of customizing it like on every page and then if we, if we change it in one place then having to make this change everywhere we will just add it to reusable blocks and let's call it um, header and now instead of using the, the block from our page sections gallery um, category when we create a new page we will drag header from re reusable blocks okay so this was the header and in the next part we will take care of the footer <laughs>